Um, uh, okay, so uh, I'll be talking about uh, cardinality, thunder determinacy. Um, okay, maybe a little less of a survey than my abstract, uh, I said in my abstract, but um, okay. So a, a cardinality is for us a, an equivalent class of sets under uh, the bijection uh, equivalence relation. Uh, the term uh, a cardinal will refer to a specific type of ordinal that doesn't inject into any smaller ordinal. Uh, under the axiom of choice, every cardinality class has a unique uh, cardinal in it. Um, uh, the axiom of determinacy is the assertion that in any uh, two-player games where the moves are made in uh, omega, uh, one of the two players has a winning strategy. Uh, the axiom of choice must fail under uh, the axiom of determinacy. And one way to see this is um, the following result that says um, uh, the, card the cardinal structure below the power set of omega uh, uh, satisfied this choiceless version of the continuum hypothesis. Namely, the only uncountable cardinal below the power set of omega is uh, itself. Uh, so, you know, it, it's great to distinguish the, the cardinality of different sets, but um, uh, the dream of, you know, you know, when you study cardinality is to completely characterize uh, the cardinal below a, a set. Uh, and it's even better if you can find natural theories that are able to prove this complete characterization. Uh, so a natural uh, generalization would be, uh, what about uh, studying the, um, the cardinalities below the power set of omega one? So we're, far, we're quite far away from understanding um, the cardinal structure below the power set of omega one. But a different way of generalizing this would be to look at the cardinality of uh, sets uh, below omega sequences through certain uh, uncountable cardinals. So, uh, so uh, let me introduce the following definition, I guess, of steel. Uh, so we say that the bull phase GCH holds at a cardinal kappa if and only if there are uh, no injections of kappa plus into the power set of kappa. So if uh, kappa plus is, uh, has a kappa plus complete non-principal ultra filter, then uh, you, by a little stability argument, you can show that the bull phase GCH holds at omega. And since Solovey showed omega one is measurable under AD, this is one of several ways to show that the bull phase GCH holds at omega. Uh, but more generally, we, we have bull phase GCH for quite a while. Uh, so let theta be the supremum of the ordinal that R can surject onto. Uh, using inner model theory techniques, uh, Steele showed under AD that the bull phase GCH holds below theta of L of R, and more generally under AD plus, wouldn't show that the bull phase GCH holds below the actual theta. Um, and um, with Jackson and Trang, we have uh, more combinatorial methods that can establish the bull phase GCH below um, you know, the, the projective ordinal or even all of omega one. Um, okay. So now, once you have uh, the bull phase GCH and omega, this will allow you to show that um, R and omega one are incompatible cardinals. And then with a little more work, you can show that uh, the following, oh, arrows were always uh, referred to strict injection. So below R cross omega one, this is what, uh, th these are some of the cardinals um, below R cross omega one. So to distinguish R cross omega one from omega one to the omega, you need, um, well, you, you need, um, partition properties. So uh, I'll, I'll state the correct type version. So a function from epsilon into the ordinal is said to have the correct type if it is discontinuous everywhere and has uniform cofinality omega. This means that, uh, remember the choice fails here. So this means that there is a sequence of cofinal sequence witnessing each term of F has uh, cofinality omega. Uh, we let X to the epsilon sub star be the collection of increasing functions from epsilon into X uh, of the correct type. And the um, partition relation kappa arrow star kappa epsilon sub two is the assertion that for any uh, partition of kappa to epsilon of the correct type into two pieces, there is a club homogeneous set and an I in uh, either zero or one, so that for every function passing through this club, P of F is constantly I. And you can show more or less this is equivalent to the ordinary type of partition relation that you know, probably most people are familiar with. Uh, under AD, Martin showed that omega one satisfies the, uh, the, the topmost partition uh, exponent relation, the so called strong partition property. Omega two satisfies every smaller than omega two exponent partition relation, the so called weak partition property, but it's not a strong partition cardinal. And uh, for n between three and omega, it, it doesn't satisfy anything. It's actually a singular cardinal, cofinality omega two. Okay. So then uh, once you, uh, as long as you have the omega exponent uh, partition relation, you can now separate omega one to the omega from R, R cross omega one. 
and uh, so and then we have these five uh, very concrete um, cardinals below uh, omega one to the omega. And the, then I guess what we want to ask is, are these all of them? So uh, under the axiom of real determinacy with dependent choice, uh, wouldn't show that these are exactly the five uncountable cardinals, and this is their injection relation. So the goal of uh, this talk is to um, uh, try to give a, a, combina a combinatorial proof of Wooden's result from maybe a slightly weaker hypothesis, um, th uh, th this structure result, and do it in such a way that um, it can be generalized to uh, higher uncountable cardinals. Um, so, okay, so, and, and uh, so first, uh, I mean, a part of this, the first step in doing this is always to distinguish the different cardinals. So we wanna show that, um, you, know, you know, omega sequence through other uncountable cardinals have a sort of natural structure. So to indicate what the natural structures are, it's best to look at a few examples. Since omega two has a, a number of partition properties, the argument we use for omega one uh, more or less uh, can be used to get this picture here. So uh, you have omega two to the omega on the top, then you have omega one to the omega cross omega two, and then underneath that you have omega one to the omega uh, disjoint union omega two. Omega one to the omega and omega two are incompatible, and then you have all the stuff from before, the earlier stuff. Okay, so th these are some concrete distinct cardinals below uh, omega two to the omega. Okay, but omega two is a little bit misleading because none of these techniques are gonna work at omega three because omega three doesn't have any partition properties. So the correct way to approach this is to use ultra power representations. So omega two is the ultra power of omega one by the club measure in omega one. Omega three is the ultra power of omega one by the two full product of the club measure in omega one. So with the ultra power representation, you can prove the suitable instance of both phase GCH and uh, do certain strong partition arguments to uh, uh, separate omega three the omega from like uh, omega two the omega cross omega two. And then you get this uh, sort of uh, five, five cardinal diagram that we saw for omega one and omega two. And of course you have all the earlier stuff underneath that. Uh, okay, so this suggests uh, what, uh, the be what the natural behavior at omega sequences through successor cardinals should look at like. It has this uh, five cardinals at the end and then everything else that naturally has to come earlier than that. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, so take so they're represented by functions from like omega one to the omega one, um, you know, modulo the uh, the club. Oh, oh, 80, 80. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything is under 80. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, so what should the natural behavior be at uh, limit cardinals of countable cofinality? So let's look at the first one, uh, Aleph omega to the omega. So uh, using partition arguments, you can show that it's uh, omega regular, meaning that if I split Aleph omega to the omega into countably many pieces xn, at least one of the pieces must have full maximum possible size. And when you combine that with uh, both phase GCH, uh, you get that um, right below omega, uh, Aleph omega to the omega, you have the union of the uh, ends in omega, uh, Aleph n to the omega, and then all the earlier stuff, right? And this suggests at, uh, at uh, car uh, cardinals of countable cofinality, there's always that one thing strictly underneath. Okay, and then this pattern continues for a little while, and then you reach the first, um, uh, count of, uh, ordinal of uncountable cofinality, and then something different must happen. So um, uh, at Aleph sub omega one, uh, so, uh, so pick a, uh, a map phi, it's defined on a set of real P and goes into Aleph omega one and is unbounded in Aleph omega one. These things are sometimes called norms. Um, uh, this norm phi is said to be sigma one one bounded. If you take any sigma one one subset A of P, the image of A under the norm is strictly bounded below Aleph omega one. So this is kind of the analog of sigma one one bounding for the familiar order type norm. Um, uh, and, uh, and in fact, you can use the order type norm to define such a pre well ordering, right? You can just let phi of uh, an element of wo be uh, Aleph sub the order type of W. Um, Okay, so once you have one of these unbounded norms, you can define a, a certain set, k phi. It consists of pairs p and f, so that f is an omega sequence through phi of p. 
and then under AD, you can show that whenever you have one of these unbounded norms, at the very top, you have um, uh, Aleph omega 1 uh, to the omega. Underneath that, you have K phi cross uh, Aleph omega 1. And then underneath that, you have K phi disjoint union Aleph omega 1. And then K phi and Aleph omega 1 are disjoint. And then every earlier thing has to be below K phi. Okay, and then at this point, a natural question would be, how much does this really depend on the norm you chose? So uh, under just AD, if um, you if phi is a unbounded norm, which is also sigma one one bounded, and psi is any other unbounded norm, we know that the uh, sigma one one bounded one always injects into the other one. Uh, and and uh, you know in L of R there are there are norms that induce different cardinals. But if you strengthen your determinacy hypothesis to uh, a weakened form of the real of real determinacy, so 81 half R is the determinacy of games on R, where one of the two players must play um, uh, moves from omega. Uh, and Keckridge actually showed that uh, over AD, uh, that this principle is equivalent to AD and the, um, the ability to uniformize all relations on R. And in practice, uniformization is how we actually use 81 half R. Um, but um, but one, uh, once you assume uh, half real determinacy, uh, any two unbounded norm phi and psi will always induce the exact same cardinal. So it collapses if you assume a little more, uh, if you assume real determinacy. By the way, um, it's open whether 81 half R is equivalent to 80 R, but uh, wouldn't show it if you add on DC and they become the same. Okay. Okay, okay. So. Um, uh, so in, in the remaining talk, I want to sketch a combinatorial argument of this uh, characterization of wooden. Uh, and um, you know, it'll be done using partition properties in such a way that you could generalize it to, you know, certainly be like the delta one three. And uh, I don't see why you could go all the way up to um, all of alpha, alpha less than omega one. Um, uh, the, the, you know, for K, uh, this K phi, there's some uniformity issues that you need to deal with. And I am less confident uh, at the moment whether this is the complete picture under um, uh, Aleph Omega 1. But, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so, okay, so let's, let's start this argument, but let me try to summarize what's exactly happening. Um, so, okay, we're, we're going to work in 81 half R, fix a subset of omega 1 to the omega, and I want to uh, analyze what are the possible cardinalities that this set X could be. So in order to do this, you have to somehow create an, an injection of something into X. So how exactly do you do that? So the idea is I take a, an F that does belong to X. We're going to define some kind of master club, figure out how to construct each point of F. Uh, using those points on the master club. Uh, and now, uh, okay, you, you figured out some instruction for how to create F. Now, given any other G that passes through this kind of master club, uh, define an omega sequence using the points on this G in the exact same manner that F was created from its own uh, uh, witnessing function that passes through the master club. Uh, now, I have to arrange this master club to be a subclub of, of clubs are homogeneous for various types of partitions. Uh, the point is that um, F itself is going to, uh, you know, through a standard witness, it's going to witness uh, that um, which side of uh, which which side of the partition that um, uh, the master club is going to be homogeneous for, and this will allow us to uh, conclude that uh, this injection that we define every element, element of the image of this injection share the important property uh, that F had. Of course, the most important property we want that it, it shares is the fact that you are a member of X, right? That, that's what will allow us to map into X. Um, okay, so, so that's kind of the main idea. So let me see if I can have time to uh, give you some of the details of this. Okay, so all the determinacy, descriptive set theory, scale arguments, and everything is uh, all kind of hidden inside of this result. So this is due to, um, oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, that's the next function. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, let me, let me get back to that. <laughs> um, okay, so in the course of this argument, um, we'll define some function D. Uh, there'll be three functions, F0, F1, F2 from R to R, and these will be obtained actually under AD alone using uh, uniformization. Uh, the only real use of uh, half-real determinacy will be to choose uh, a, this function f sub x, which is 
also defined by some kind of uniformization. So in, as I go along, I'll tell you what these functions are. Um, uh, for each F, I will um, uh, look at a certain CFC model. So it uh, will let M sub F be uh, the girdle constructible universe uh, defined relative to F, D, and the graph of these four functions. And the most important point is that if I define it this way, the CFC model will be closed under these four functions on the reals. Uh, okay, so let's start defining what, what these, each of these functions are. So as I mentioned, most of the descriptive set theory is hidden inside this result, uh, this result which it's you know, sometimes called a Kunin tree. So uh, in a streamlined form, uh, there is some club C star uh, and some partial function from R cross omega one to omega, uh, cross omega one into omega one. And it has the property that for every single real X and every alpha, either omega or belonging to this club, if I look at the collection of dx alpha beta and where beta ranges under all the alphas, this actually is an ordinal, meaning uh, you know I don't there's no gaps, right? I don't skip any ordinal, uh, and let's call O x alpha that that ordinal. Uh, okay, so you know you can arrange O x omega to be the smallest element of C star. That's for cleanliness purposes. Um, but the most important property is that if you have any function from omega one to omega one, there is some real X so that for every single ordinal alpha in C star, F of alpha is dominated by this O X alpha for some, some X. And, uh, and when combined with the first bullet point, that means that um, there is a beta strictly less than alpha so that F of alpha is equal to DX alpha beta. So there is a smaller ordinal than alpha which codes F of alpha in some way. So uh, this is kind of the most important step in, uh, so in like kind of Jackson's measure analysis that Grieger mentioned, right? The, the ability to drop down uh, you know, one ordinal will allow you to use normality in various type of arguments. Uh, okay, so this will be our basic coding mechanism. Um, uh, there are a number of different ways that you can code clubs by reals. One way could be like, um, we'll define C sub X to be in some sense, the closure point of this OX function. Uh, you can check that if you define it this way, this is a club subset of Omega one. And in fact, for any other club subset of Omega one, there is some real X so that the club coded by X is subclub of C. Okay, so uh, you know, because, uh, okay, so these two functions might look a little mysterious at the moment, but um, I need two functions to make this club coding kind of uh, reasonable. So the first function, uh, so uh, okay, so for any x, the next element of the club, uh, uh, the club C x, this is a function from omega one to omega one. So by this third bullet point, there is some X which dominate this function. So by using a suitable instance of projective uniformization, find a function F zero so that O of F zero X is something that dominates that next element function. Um, okay, the second function is even more mysterious, but uh, so F one is a function from R cross R into R and it's defined so that whenever X and Y is in R and alpha is in C star, O of X of O of Y of alpha is less than O of F1 XY of alpha. So without going into the proof, it, 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 you know, th this function looks very, very strange, but um, the, the purpose of these two functions is for me to, defi is to define a meaningful master club. So uh, let I sub F be the intersection of C of Z where Z ranges over all the reals of uh, M uh, F. Uh, since, uh, since uh, MF is a model of ZFC in the background, the real world, the model of determinacy, there are only countably many such reals. So you can check that uh, I sub F really is a club in the real world. Uh, and uh, the purpose of F0 and F1 is to get this property here. For any gamma belonging to the C star, the next element of the master club after gamma is actually equal to the soup of, uh, over all the reals in MF, the next element of C sub Z after gamma. So we'll see how to use this in our coding in just a moment. Um, uh, okay, so now uh, uh, we wanted to find a real which tells us how to construct an ordinal. So an instruction for an ordinal consists of a natural number E and finitely many reals X zero to XM minus one. And uh, each instruction will define a certain partial function from omega one to the n into omega one. So it, we, we start off by saying h of the empty instruction on the empty set is d of pick any real zero bar is the constant zero sequence omega of e. Uh, and for any k less than n, we'll let h of the instruction restricted to k plus one 
of gamma zero to gamma k be d of x k gamma k and the previously defined h of whatever. So the idea is that you iteratively use this d to define some kind of function. Okay, okay, so whatever, whatever, I'll show you a meaningful instruction in just a moment. But just by using the partition property, um, you can find a club subset of omega one so that either the club is completely disjoint from the domain of this partial function or c to the n is completely inside the domain of this function. And in that case, by another partition argument, you can find, uh, you can arrange the club so that for any n tuple through the club, uh, hi of L is, is strictly gr is greater than or equal to soup of L or it's strictly less than the soup of L. Um, and then um, using an instance of projective uniformization, you can find an, a function F2 so that whenever I is, an in, uh, is a ordinal instruction, um, uh, the club coded by C, uh, F2 of I is a club with this property here. So the purpose of F2 is to, alter, in, in the situation we're interested in, is to make this HI thing an injection. So let me show you how to get actually useful instructions. So uh, the purpose of the instruction is to code an ordinal. So fix an ordinal alpha. Um, so, uh, okay, set alpha zero to be alpha. And now it breaks up into a couple cases. Uh, if alpha zero is already less than the least element of C star, uh, you can find some E so that D of whatever, the zero bar sequence, uh, omega E is equal to alpha zero. And then you're great, it's done, right? I have coded the ordinal alpha zero by a single natural number. Okay, but probably, uh, alpha zero is greater than equal to the least element of C star. In this case, uh, let chi be uh, the next element of your master club strictly bigger than alpha zero. Let iota zero be the um, largest element uh, of either the minimal element of C or of the master club, which is less than this chi. And you can check by doing this, uh, alpha zero, which is less than chi, Chi is uh, the next element of the master club after iota zero. And uh, we noted before that this is actually equal to the soup over all the reals of MF, the next element of the club coded by Z after iota zero. So since MF, uh, so then, uh, then let Z be uh, the constructability, constructable least Z so that uh, alpha zero is less than uh, the next element of CZ after iota zero. Uh, if you, if you recall what the property of F0 is, the, uh, we, we arrange F0 so that O of F0 of Z at iota zero uh, is all, it's bigger than even that. And then um, by the fundamental property of that Kunin tree function D, there is an alpha one strictly less than alpha zero so that alpha zero is exactly equal to D of F0 Z uh, uh, iota sub zero alpha one. Uh, okay, set y0 to be f0 of z. So we have made some progress, right? I, I coded alpha0 by a real and a strictly smaller ordinal alpha1. Now repeat this on alpha1 until this algorithm tells you to stop. Uh, and it must stop because these ordinal alpha i's are getting smaller and smaller. So once you're done, uh, uh, once your construction has ended, you have, you have obtained uh, uh, a, an instruction uh, which I'll call the, uh, the, the standard instruction for alpha, and a bunch of ordinals in the master club called the standard witness for alpha. Uh, it has the property that uh, H applied to the standard instruction for alpha on its standard witness is alpha itself. So I have coded alpha. Um, okay, uh, you know, if you check the construction, I have made um, H restricted to the standard, uh, if you any restriction of the standard instruction on any restriction of the standard witness, it's gonna be bigger than the least element of the standard witness restricted to K. And uh, remember, I chose F2 to be homogeneous for either this property or is the opposite, right? And because um, uh, the standard witness belongs to uh, the master club, um, you actually have that H applied to any L in the master club, it's bigger than the last element of that tuple. Um, okay, whatever that means, the purpose is that uh, you can use this property inductively to, to conclude that uh, H of the standard instruction is actually an injection. Uh, remember, in the end, I have to create some kind of injection, right? Um, okay, okay, so, so that's how you code one ordinal. How do you code an omega sequence of ordinals? So if you put a bunch of instructions together, you'll get something called a sequence instruction. So a sequence instruction is a real. It, uh, it, has, uh, it has a real coding, some countable ordinal epsilon. Um, uh, epsilon. 
uh, it has uh, omega many different instructions, I sub n. And there is some real that tells you if you're given an omega sequence of ordinal, uh, how to pick out finitely many points from, from that function g or from the limit points of g. Uh, and then once you have a sequence instruction, this will give you a partial function from omega one to the epsilon into uh, omega sequences uh, through omega one. By uh, You can set like a q s of g of n to be, uh, okay, so given g, uh, according to what s tells you, pick out finitely many ordinals from g or its limit point, and then use that to evaluate in uh, h of the mth instruction. Um, okay, so now, uh, 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 for each sequence instruction, uh, so here is the, the, the only use of uh, uniformization. So for each sequence instruction S, uh, we can define a partition P sub S uh, on epsilon lamp sequences by P sub S of G is zero if uh, Q S of G is defined and it actually lands in X. So this is how I'm gonna arrange it to land into X. Uh, by, um, uh, uni uh, by uniformization, you can find a function f sub x so that whenever s is a sequence instruction, uh, f sub f of s is going to code a club which is homogeneous for that partition p sub s. Okay, so now I think I have to find all, all the functions, uh, all the functions that I, I said at the beginning. Um, okay, so now, um, uh, now given f, we wanna create a sequence instruction for f itself. So, okay, we know already that uh, for each f of n, uh, we, we have i f of n, which is the standard uh, instruction for f of n, which is accompanied by a finite set of ordinal, uh, L of f of n is standard witness. Okay, union up all the ordinal uh, from the master club that you needed uh, in any possible standard witness, that gives you a set A. Uh, so a technical complication is that the partition property requires things of the correct type. So, okay, knock off the limit point and let A prime be the isolated points of A. And let G, be, G sub F be an enumeration uh, in order type, some countable ordinal epsilon F of those isolated points. Uh, and this will be called a standard sequence witness for F. Uh, one point I do, one thing I want, do want to point out is that um, uh, because omega is countable in MF and actually everywhere, um, you can show that MF knows that epsilon F is countable. So this is actually kind of the dividing line between omega sequences and Wooden's cardinal S1. Um, anyway, um, okay. Uh, now, uh, putting all the uh, standard instructions for IF together and uh, picking in a element of woe coding epsilon F and uh, let's see, what else do I need? And uh, uh, picking some real that tells you how to extract from epsilon F sequences in the exact same manner that the FN standard witness sits inside of GF, the standard sequence witness, um, uh, you will define uh, uh, the standard, um, what, uh, what, you, what we want to call the standard uh, sequence instruction for F itself. The entire point is that if you, you, you put, if you, if you've done this correctly, then uh, Q of the standard sequence witness for F applied to the standards, uh, Q, uh, Q of the standard sequence instruction applied to the standard sequence witness for F should be F itself. So I, in, in other words, I have successfully coded F in some way. Um, okay, so each component function of Q is a, uh, in, uh, it was arranged to be an injection and therefore Q itself has to be an injection. Uh, now here's the kind of the most important point. Uh, if F was in X, then uh, Q of uh, the standard sequence, uh, uh, the standard witness for F is F itself, which belongs to X. But by definition of P sub S, P sub S of G sub F is then zero. But the master club is inside of the club coded by fx of s, which was chosen to be a club that was homogeneous for that partition. And therefore, g sub f witnessed that your, uh, the master club is actually homogeneous for the zero side, which means everything maps, everything in the master club to the epsilon f maps into x. So in other words, what we've shown is that if f is in x, uh, this q sub s sub f is an injection of the master club to the epsilon f into x itself. Right, so, so we've, we've solved this problem of how to create meaningful injections into X. Oh, I'm, okay, I'm almost done. Um, okay, so now we're finally ready to um, uh, 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 show Wooden's uh, characterization of those, uh, those cardinals below omega one to omega. 
So let me just do a few of the cases. So the first case is there is some f in x so that epsilon f, remember, this is the order type of the isolated points of all the ordinals that you needed in any standard uh, witness. If that happens to be an infinite set, um, then we know that uh, Q sub s maps the master club to uh, raise the epsilon f into x. And if since epsilon f is countably infinite, um, uh, the master club to the epsilon f is in bijection with uh, omega 1 to the omega. And then by the cantor schroeder bernstein we have that uh, the size of x is uh, omega 1 to the omega. Alternatively, suppose for every single f in x, uh, this ordinal epsilon f is finite, then define phi of f to be the standard instruction for f along with its uh, standard sequence uh, witness. Now, uh, G sub F is a epsilon sub F sequence. So if epsilon sub F is finite, G sub F is basically uh, just a countable ordinal, right? So uh, more or less, phi is an injection of F into uh, R cross omega one. So what, what this shows is that uh, for any um, X subset of omega one to the omega, either you have size omega one to the omega or you inject into R cross omega one. So, and now to finish off the five cardinal characterization, you just have to uh, look at all, you know, look at all the possible subcases of case two and, um, you know, continue this analysis to get all the, the other structures. And uh, yeah, so, so this more or less completes the uh, wooden five cardinal characterization. Um, so with the time left, I just want to say, um, uh, okay, so if you want to go past omega one, then your partition properties are getting more complicated and you need to analyze the types of all possible ordinals. Once you get past delta one three, now there are more um, regular cardinals. So you have to handle each each regular cardinal in a different way. The Kunin tree only handles the uh, cofinality omega case, uh, the cof omega ordinals. Um, and uh, uh, in case I didn't point out, all of this really does need AD one half R or something, because in L of R, there are intermediate cardinals floating around in all of those pictures that I showed you. For instance, under between R and R cross omega one, we have a, a well ordering of order type larger than theta that sits in between R and R cross omega one. So under in, in L of R, the, the area between R cross uh, R and R cross omega one is not finite, but uh, I still believe that it's probably a very elegant uh, structure that you could probably probably prove in, in L of R. Anyway, thanks for listening. <laughs>